And number one, we have understanding the four types of phobia races. So each phobia has an assigned race. They can be one of the four, which are mechanical, undead, dimensional, and monster. You can identify the race of the phobie by the color of their key card. Blue for mechanical phobies, green for undead phobies, purple for dimensional phobies, and red for monster phobies. Mechanical phobies will typically have a higher health for their key cost than any other race and are immune to the poison and disease status effect. This is offset by being the only race that take electrical damage electrical damage is bonus damage that certain phobies have you can identify if a phobie will deal additional damage to mechanicals by looking at their key card it will be highlighted in blue and have an electricity symbol next to it the bonus electrical damage will only apply to mechanicals it is best to deal with mechanicals with a phobie that deals electric damage as mechanicals are harder to kill otherwise due to their high health stat. Next, we have undead phobies which heal for 40% of the damage they deal to other phobies. The disadvantage being that they cannot be healed or cured of the poison effect. It is best to try to poison or disease them as they will slowly die off or have their health drop down low enough that your phobies can just one or two shot them. Next, we have dimensional phobies, which advantages are that they will deal damage equal to their attack stat to the phobies that dealt them the final blow, while also pulling that phobie one tile towards them. Their disadvantage being that they take 50% more damage from poison and disease effects. It is best to try to let dimensional phobies die off by poison or disease as doing so will not trigger the death damage and pull effect you can also try pushing them into lava and letting them die from the lava damage this will ignore their death damage and pull effect dying from traps also doesn't trigger their death effect if none of these options are available your best option is to let your least valuable phobie deal the last hit you can also negate the pull effect by having one of your phobies move in front of your range phobie and then having the range phobie deal the last hit then moving your other phobie back to safety lastly we have monster phobies which have no special traits there are your well-rounded phobies they have no strengths and as such have no weaknesses either different types of movement there are currently three types of movement walking flying and bypassing walking is indicated by the pause symbol and units with walking cannot go over obstacles enemy units or abysses flying is indicated by the wing symbol and units with flying can go over obstacles and abysses they can also choose to stay hovering above abysses and obstacles the last movement we have is bypassing which is indicated by a curving arrow bypassing allows units to go through anything except abysses flying Flying units are the only type of units that will not die when pulled or pushed into an abyss. Types of range. There are two different types of range. You have your line of sight range, which is indicated by a straight arrow, and you have lobbing range, which is indicated by a curving arrow. Units with line of sight range can only target units within their line of sight. If the phobie that you wish to target is blocked by an obstacle or another phobie, then you can't attack your target. However, units with lobbing range can attack units over obstacles and other phobies types of attacks there are currently five different types of attacks you have single target attacks targeted aoe attacks splash aoe attacks beam attacks and dash attacks single target attacks only deal damage slash apply effects to a single unit targeted aoe attacks Start from the target and extend the damage slash effect to any units adjacent to the target. There are also melee AoE phobies and their damage starts from themselves as opposed to their target. An example being the Minotaur. Splash AoE is the same as targeted AoE attacks except that the range of the damage slash effect increases one tile further. Beam attacks are unique in that they deal damage all the way across the map starting from the tile in front of your phobie. Lastly, we have dash attacks that move a phobie to a specific tile and it deals damage to the phobies in its path.
Passive abilities. Passive abilities are always active the moment the phobia is summoned, and there is no way to block off their ability. Special abilities. Special abilities are different as you need to activate them in order to use them. Some phobies on with their special ability lock indicated by a lock symbol, which means that they have to wait a specific number of turns until they can use their special ability. This is different from a cooldown, which is indicated by the clock symbol and only happens once you use the special ability. A cooldown of one means that you have to go one turn until you can use the ability again and so on. Next, we have status effects. There are numerous status effects that your phobia can be under. Some are good and some are bad. There is a damage buff and debuff, poison, disease, fire, immobilize, petrify, movement buff, frozen, action debuff, and friendly. The duration of the effect is indicated by the hourglass symbol and the number indicating how many turns it'll last. A damage buff increases the damage your phobia does per attack and debuff decreases the damage. The poison and disease effect work similar in which the affected phobia will take a set amount of damage at the end of your turn only with a few key differences between the two. Poison can be cured once the phobia receives healing of any sort and it only lasts the turns indicated. Disease is permanent. It lasts until the phobia is killed and it cannot be cured. However, your phobia can still receive healing. Both of these effects can stack on top of each other for devastating damage. Next, we have the fire status effect, which lights the tile that the targeted phobia is on on fire, dealing bonus damage to whatever phobia is left standing on the tile at the end of the turn. The immobilized effect prevents phobies from moving. They can still attack and use special abilities. They can also be pushed and pulled. The petrified effect turns a phobie into stone and prevents them from being targeted, receiving damage or effects. However, they can not attack or move and other phobies can attack through them. The petrified effect always ends on your opponent's turn so be wary as the phobie is more than likely to die. The movement buff simply increases the amount of tiles a phobie can move by one. The frozen effect prevents a phobie from moving and attacking while still being vulnerable to receiving damage. However, each time the phobie is hit by an attack that deals fire damage, it removes one cooldown turn from the frozen status. The action debuff lowers the amount of actions a phobie can take from two actions to only one action. Lastly, we have the friendly debuff which reduces all the damage to zero to any phobies affected. Note that status effects such as poison, disease, and all other effects still work. Packs. In the store, there are a variety of packs to buy. There are the uneasy, frightening, and scary packs, which you can buy by spending your tears. Then there are the terrifying, horrific, and dreadful packs that you can buy with coffee beans. The first time you open a different pack, you are guaranteed a new phobie of a specific rarity depending on the pack you buy. An uneasy pack will give you a guaranteed common phobia the first time you open. A frightening pack will give you an uncommon phobia. A scary pack will give you a rare. The terrifying pack will give you an uncommon. The horrific will give you a rare. And the dreadful pack will give you an ultra rare phobia. Because of this, I recommend you open at least one of each pack as doing so will guarantee you increase your phobia selection. Keep in mind that the tutorial makes you open an uneasy pack so there is no need to open it again as it will not give you a guaranteed new phobia. Stress level. Stress level refers to the overall progression a player has in phobies. A higher stress level than yours will indicate that the player has unlocked more phobies and that they have higher level phobies than you. Each level has a specific number of stress points you need to acquire before leveling up. You can increase your stress level by upgrading your phobie. You will then be rewarded points equal to the level you just upgraded your phobie to. For example, if I upgrade a phobie from 3 to 4, I will gain 4 stress points. Upgrading your stress level is important as there are certain phobies that you can only unlock through stress level progression. You can also get an increase in cards and experience earned through stress level progression. Challenges and Quests Every day, there are four available quests for you to complete. The first quest is always the same. Start four new games and you get 10 coffee. The two middle quests always give you experience. And the last quest always offers phobie cards, which are essential for upgrading your phobie. So I recommend refreshing it for a chance to get cards for the phobies you use a lot. Keep in mind, you can only refresh one quest per day. You should try your best to always do the quests daily, as failing to complete them will not spawn any new 
new quest the next day, and it's best to maximize your resources per day. Next, we have challenges, which are puzzles you can do to get extra experience, tears, and even coffee. You can get a total of 10,900 experience, 900 tears, and 60 coffee beans. The challenges can also help teach you certain mechanics of the game, introduce you to new phobies, and help you with certain situations you may face while playing against other people. You can also look up guides if you are stuck on a certain challenge. There are also 30 extra challenges that you can unlock once you are stress level 9, where you can get an additional 5400 XP, 60 coffee beans, and 900 tears. In total, if you complete all challenges, you can get 16,300 XP, 1800 tears, and 120 coffee beans, which will help out your progression.